but it's interesting when you're working from the inside out mm -hmm. you're helping the brain just for things to happen more easily they're happening yes. naturally yes. so the child doesn't have to think about them anymore right. and i just think that's what uh, that's what i've seen with the kids over the years and that's the beauty of it it's like if some i always think it's like if someone is a naturally good singer mm -hmm. it's so much better than having to learn to try and be a naturally mm -hmm. good singer i mean mm -hmm. you're either a naturally good singer or you're not and yes mm -hmm. you can practice and practice and practice but if you don't have a good ear and you're not a great singer you're never going to be at the uh, no matter how much practice you do you'll never be at that level of that natural singer yeah. so what what i feel what i've seen over the years in combining the sound therapy what, with what i do with speech therapy is it puts the person in a position where everything is happening much more naturally they don't mm -hmm. have to think about being calmer they don't have mm -hmm. to think about how do i listen they don't mm -hmm. have to think about how do i process those longer instructions mm -hmm. how do i put those sentences together mm -hmm. how do i interact and engage mm -hmm. it just happens or at least it is much easier yes. it's feasible yes. yes i think what we are doing sometimes uh, I, I don't want to put down what we are doing of course yeah but very often what i feel we are doing is to make a child uh, from a state to, to bring a child from a state of disability mm -hmm. disabled mm -hmm. to a state of able okay. doesn't mean that he's not going to have problems anymore i yes. have lived a life uh, that and i have to say it as a, as an ex dyslexic mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i say ex dyslexic not meaning that it's gone mm -hmm. meaning that i can overcome it mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. don't ask me uh, and, and that is something that parents have to understand. Don't ask me to rush. Don't ask me to, to be uptight. Or to, don't put me in a situation where I have to be uptight. Yeah. Or yeah. I'm tired. Yes. Those situations might bring back yes. some of a the certain uh, elements. Uh, elements. Yes. Which means that we have to also. And the work that we are doing here at the Listening Center is while some people our the, the listening therapist we call them are working with the children the listening consultant is most of the time working with the parents mm -hmm, explaining mm -hmm. to them that they have to create a space to permit the child to change mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Absolutely. And, and what can be done in order to make to maximize yes that. yes and that's the thing is that it's it's about reframing that's what i find mm -hmm. so much because when the child starts to change and i know just as you say there you know, it, it, as I would say to all the parents, it isn't a magic wand. It isn't mm -hmm. a magic bullet. It's no. not going to solve everything. No. However, in saying that, in my 20 years of working, and you're working longer than me, I've never seen anything. And I've seen a lot of techniques, and I've traveled a lot, and I, I use a lot of different techniques, but I've never seen anything do what the lift can do. And I use other forms of sound therapy. Yes. So mm -hmm. it's even though we're saying, no, it's not a magic bullet, and it's not a magic wand, if we look at if it if we're comparing it to possibly other techniques that are out there like if, if i talk from a speech therapy perspective mm -hmm. i mean you know when i trained over 20 years ago and for the first six years i used speech therapy techniques only mm -hmm. but i became so frustrated with speech therapy because i could see that there was, yes it worked for a group of children mm -hmm. but there were so many children there who were bright kids who wanted to change who really you knew the potential was there mm -hmm. but we were limited by our techniques mm -hmm. and the same is true today and that's why when i started traveling and was lucky enough to have come across you and other people in the field of sound therapy and sensory integration i was amazed at the difference that i started to see with the kids because i could see the difference between using in my case speech therapy mm -hmm. techniques mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. and now using speech therapy combined with sound therapy Yes. And it was the difference between day and night. Because children, as you say, they were changing from the inside out. Neurologically, things were being fine-tuned. Mm -hmm. They were getting that foundation. The doors were opening neurologically so that things could shift and change. You know? Yes. Mm -hmm. The thing is that you, you, you are in a position where I have never been. Yeah. You are a speech pathologist who, move, who, who were looking for ways of being more efficient. I've always been a listening or sound yes, therapist, yes. which means that I, I have nothing to compare except mm -hmm. that 
what can we do better with what we have mm -hmm. or what can we make it easier and most accessible mm -hmm. for people that's mm -hmm. why uh, i have developed the lift lift uh, the lift is a is a easier more transportable version of the original listening training techniques that we are still using per, at the listening center together mm -hmm. with the lift mm -hmm. uh, we 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 which means that uh, I always, and for me, it become part of my, uh, that's the way I'm wired. I'm wired uh, in the understanding that you have to work from, from the inside out, from the sensory system up. And there is a lot of logic behind this approach mm -hmm. because that is the way development world works. And there is a lot of techniques and a lot of thinking at, at every level of helping people which believe in the fact that if you want to do anything to help someone, you have to work the step-by-step -step development. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The step-by-step -step development starts with the sensory touching, feeling uh, an apple. An apple has a weight. An apple uh, uh, false. An apple has a consistency, an apple has a taste. Uh, an apple can hurt if you mm -hmm. receive it in your face. This is the concept of an apple. We have to be very careful not to think that because you show an apple uh, to a child, is a child is going to know that it's an apple. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you remember this uh, Magritte painting, the surrealist painting of the pipe? Uh, Magritte paints a pipe and he writes underneath, ce n'est pas une pipe, it is not a pipe. And he's absolutely right. And I say that because uh, uh, more, the more we are moving, the more we are teaching children without thinking too much of the senses, of the sensory system, which is what gives the child the sense, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which means the sense which means the meaning, which in French, le sens, uh, le sens, uh, sense and meaning are the same word, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. Be, and, and there is something, you know, technique like Montessori, technique like op occupational uh, therapy in terms of the, the therapeutical techniques, sensory integration, they understand that. You have to put it in the body before it goes to the different level of the mind in order to reach corticality. Many, many techniques, unfortunately, try to start from the top down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are not developmentally appropriate Absolutely. when, when uh, w w from my point of mm -hmm. view. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you completely. And that was my struggle, really, with speech and language therapy. I had children coming in whose attention was all over their place, the, their body was all over their place, they were busy moving around the room. I mean, how was I going to do speech and language work at the table? It was impossible. So I needed to use strategies that were going to help to that child to come together better from the bottom up so that they could be calmer, that they could sit and listen at the table. And then the speech therapy techniques mm -hmm. came in beautifully. Yep. And that's, that's it, isn't it? Once you get that lovely foundation and things start to shift and change, then it opens the doors to doing better in speech therapy, doing better in OT, doing better in learning. And doing better in learning uh, for the teacher yeah. it, in fact the work we do which is preparing the ground mm -hmm. makes mm -hmm. life easier not only for the child but for the speech therapist absolutely but for the teacher yes yes for the parents absolutely because the child is open ready yes. i'm ready now yes it's a program of readiness yes it's a program of facilitating engagement mm -hmm. when it comes mm -hmm. to children in the spectrum mm -hmm. it's just easier for the child to come out and yeah. Yeah. Or, or receive, mm -hmm. uh, and, or, or respond, mm -hmm. which means respond, which means that putting its brain in gear, yes. which means yes. being engaged. Okay, okay. And it's funny because there's a number of different analogies and I often use the analogy of the foundation of the house. Mm -hmm. that the foundation of the house for me is the biomed end of things so making sure that if there's any allergies and tolerance toxicity that that's sorted yes. mm -hmm. okay because that'll seep into absolutely mm -hmm. everything every function but then very much the sensory motor mm -hmm. and you know and if for a lot of the children i see that's where the difficulty lies mm -hmm. is in there 
And if we can come at that from the sensory, the sensory motor piece, putting all that together via the sound therapy and mm -hmm. other techniques, but the sound therapy being one of the, the main, if not yes. in my experience, the one that makes the biggest difference from a sensory motor point of view. Yes. I mean, I have a lot of OTs who mm -hmm. work privately occupational therapists um, in Ireland, and it's so interesting. They refer kids to me to do the lift mm -hmm. prior to starting the OT. It's interesting. Because it's interesting. they know that the child will come in, they'll be at a different level. And mm -hmm. it means the number of sessions of OT that's required will be a lot less. I think that w for, for, for comprehension of the work we do, we have to add something about the concept of listening. Yeah. Listening is not just processing auditorily. Mm -hmm. Listening, and we just have to look at the anatomy of the ear. Mm -hmm. When we see the ear, we see on the one side, this you know this little uh, uh, snail mm -hmm. which we call the cochlea which permits the auditory uh, part which permits the hearing but there is also this kind of backpipe there mm -hmm. uh, looking uh, instrument which is the vestibular system which is uh, and the vestibular system is known to help us to integrate notion of horizontality verticality and movement in space mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. vestibular system is there to uh, give us the sense of uh, weight, mm -hmm. the relationship mm -hmm. with the gravity. That's not, that's not a little thing. Yeah. It gives yeah. us a sense of who we are in this world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the sensory system gives us the sense of the movement that we have. Now, when I say the vestibular system, uh, sorry, I, when I say the vestibular system, I don't, I'm not naive, I'm not saying it's just that system, but we know, and, mm -hmm, and particularly mm -hmm. people in sensory integration mm -hmm. know very well that the vestibular system is connected with the proprioceptive yes. system, yes. you know, the, the, yes. the sensation. Yes. The, 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 this, and what is beautiful, uh, and we see it every day by listening to music, by seeing people being mm -hmm, mm -hmm, responding to mm -hmm. certain type of music, uh, 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 through certain type of movement is that as soon as you stimulate the ear with sound, mm -hmm. you get a movement of the yeah, body, yeah, the yeah. rhythm, yes. which means that the sound has an impact not only on the auditory part of the mm -hmm. brain, it mm -hmm. also has uh, an impact on the body part of the brain. I like to hear, to call it the ear of the body. Absolutely. The body listen as well, uh, uh, we have to listen to our body. Many children in the autistic spectrum, for example, w my point of view is that if they do not understand other, mm -hmm. which is basically the theory of mind, mm -hmm. you know, the, mm -hmm. the, the definition of autism, a breakdown of communication, be because not understanding other as different of me, my point is that it's because they don't understand themselves. They, they don't understand themselves because they don't perceive themselves as an entity mm -hmm. which has a weight which has uh, which which in which you can you 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 can uh, control the movement you make yes. i remember this child who was having uh, two watches to be sure that if one uh, stop the other will continue okay. otherwise it's not going to be okay. in time anymore yes yeah and and the notion of time you know the, you know this little hand moving which is not attached to the to the body mm -hmm, that I, mm -hmm. I say. Well, this is really what happened with kids with the autistic spectrum. They do not have a sense of themselves. They don't, at the, at the more severe level, they don't see themselves in the mirror. Mm -hmm. In fact, when they start looking at themselves mm -hmm. at the mirror, it's already a progress. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that they do not have eye contact, the uh, vacant, give, for me, eye contact is the best way of assessing listening. If they don't look at you, they don't listen at you. At the, li at the deepest level of listening, the body do not listen. Mm -hmm. They are vacant. Mm -hmm. They are vacant in space and time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have to start working on that, yeah. putting them together. OT is a part of that, but sound is so beautiful and many so beautiful in making this happen. Mm -hmm. And many people, and you know that, many people, senior people in the sensory uh, integration world are looking and have been looking for a long time sound therapy, any form of sound therapy mm -hmm. to help them to complement the Absolutely. work they do in the... But as mm -hmm. you say, um, 
people who are very much into sensory integration, which mm -hmm. I am, and I, and I, yeah, I know you yes. are as well. Yes, absolutely. Because mm -hmm. it's really, I mean, when, when, from a speech therapy point of view, when I look at how a child moves, mm -hmm. I can nearly tell you how they're going to talk. Interesting. Because mm -hmm. you can see it in the body. Mm -hmm. And when you say about that whole rhythm and timing piece, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we talk about temporospatial reasoning, mm -hmm. everything, uh, so much of what we do is based on time and space. Mm -hmm. But time and space then goes back to that vestibular and cochlear. Yes. So here's where, as you say again, listening with the whole body, listening with the ear, but also listening with the body as well, how critical that yes. that is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the movement of the eyes, the yes. movement of the eyes, which seems to be so far removed from listening is totally related to listening. It's related to listening at two levels. First of all, the words that you have, the letters that you have in front of you, they are representation of sounds. If you do not have good, a good perception, sense of those sounds, those words are not, very, are not gonna be recorded very clearly, mm -hmm. except mm -hmm. in some people who are very strongly visual. That okay. exists, okay. but not, most people do not have that skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there is another thing, is that the movement of the eyes, which is the ocular movement, what allows it? Well, I'm not gonna go into detail mm -hmm. about it, but if you start playing around with the vestibular system, and there are some ways to do that, mm -hmm. you are going to see the eyes starting to shake a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So in this movement of the eyes is very much related to the vestibular system of the ear, very much related to listening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we see that all the time, the children with poor eye contact. When you start, well, it depends on the child, but mm -hmm. often when you start to work on that vestibular piece, even though it's a, it, it may look like a visual piece, but mm -hmm. when you start to lay that vestibular foundation for the visual, mm -hmm. you just start to see the visual coming together. Yes. Because it's, it's a little, I, I, that analogy always amazes me, and I'm not sure if, if it's yours, mm -hmm. is the one about the camera on the tripod. Yes. Yes. It's, it's in, uh, it's in, uh, yes, in, it's in your book. Yeah. Yes, it's in your book. I mean, mm -hmm. I love that analogy, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I say that to parents all the time, and I think it makes so much sense yes. to them. How, how would you describe it? Obviously, you well, can explain it better me, than I. Well, for me, if you make a visual, I'm a very visual person, mm -hmm. because perhaps for, for 18 years of my life, I was not a good listener. I just wanted to... To, to discover the world, and my way of discovering it was visual. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and my image I always come to me. Uh, I have to, in order to understand a, a concept which is a little bit abstract, I have to visualize it. And my point is that we, we have a system which is a zoom and a tripod, okay? The, 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 the cochlear system, the, the auditory system is a zoom. But if you want to zoom well, you have to have a tripod which is well stabilized. If you have your tripod on a boat and the boat is doing that, mm -hmm. you can, I mean, yes, you can zoom, you can mm -hmm. zoom, but you have to be uh, 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 you know, a virtuoso of zooming mm -hmm. in order to zoom on a, 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 in a, a, a place where the tripod is moving. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. not saying it's impossible, but you have to do so much compensation to make it happen that God, work on the tripod. Yeah, yeah. Make the tripod work, yes. and it's going to make you zoom so much yes. easier. And yes. that is basically what we are doing with sound. Yeah. And the tripod with, is the body. And the tripod yeah. is the body. Yeah. The ear yeah. of the body yes. is the tripod. Mm -hmm. The auditory mm -hmm. ear mm -hmm. is a zoom. Mm -hmm.